So I recently got my hands on the 2020 MacBook Air entry level model. This is the $999 dual core model. I specifically wanted to try this one out because it is the cheapest laptop that Apple currently sells. So in this top features overview, we're gonna consider all the new features, including that new keyboard. Of course, Apple finally ditched the butterfly keyboard in the MacBook Air, and this new one is so good. So have a look at our top features, but first this day. Okay, so here it is, the MacBook Air 2020 edition. We're gonna go ahead and get it unboxed. It's pretty simple, we know the drill by now, but for tradition's sake, I wanted to go ahead and get this thing unboxed. So here it is, the top of the MacBook Air 2020 model. This is a 13 inch MacBook Air. It features a 1.1 gigahertz dual core CPU. Now this is not the quad core version. You should probably buy the quad core version if you're gonna be doing any sort of intense operations like video editing, raw photo editing, etc. But as I mentioned at the very outset, I wanted to specifically try the $999 MacBook Air because it is the cheapest MacBook that Apple currently sells. So that to me is just an interesting talking point. I'm always going for the top of the line machine. I thought I would just switch it up this year and say, hey, let's go to the bottom of the barrel, grab the very entry level of the entry level MacBook Air. And that's what we've done. So you see the design by Apple and California packet inside to get a little getting started guide. Of course, you saw your USB cable, your USB-C cable, and your power brick, 30 watt power brick. You have your regulatory information and, and what do we have here? Space gray Apple stickers. So nice. All right, so let's go ahead and get it unwrapped. Here it is, folks, the 2020 MacBook Air. It's very, very similar. If you've used last year's model or the year before that in 2018, you know exactly what to expect. For the most part, there are some definite notable changes here, but you still have the two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side, and you still have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right side. So as far as outside appearance, not much has changed at all. It is ever so slightly thicker and heavier, but that's almost indiscernible from last year's model. And you have the little inset here so you can lift up. I don't know what that's like, some smudges on the front lip area. I don't know what's up with that. I just took it out of the box, but whatever. All right, so here's the top of the MacBook Air. You can see the little color matched Apple logo. Nice and shiny. Let's go ahead and open it up. And the MacBook Air automatically turns on. Go ahead and remove the little protective paper. There we go. Now we're ready to get it all set up. So let's get started talking about the top features for the 2020 MacBook Air. First top feature is the 90, almost said 99 cent, $999 base price for the MacBook Air. So you go to Apple's website, you see there starting at 999, that's gonna pull in quite a few people, at least pull some eyes to this MacBook Air. That is a, a very low price for an Apple laptop, just under $1,000 get you a dual core 1.1 gigahertz processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of flash storage. If you're on a budget, you need a basic Mac laptop for word processing, web browsing. This one is gonna do a pretty good job. But by far the biggest new feature for this 2020 MacBook Air is the introduction of the scissor switch keyboard, replacing that old butterfly terrible keyboard. So the great thing about the scissor switch keyboard is that it has great key travel. That is the thing. And it's also way more reliable than the butterfly switch keyboard. And just like the previous MacBook Airs, you have touch ID and hardware function keys, no touch bar, so great. And you also get the inverted T arrow keys, which makes it easier to touch without looking at your keyboard to know which arrow key you're pressing. Of course, all of this came with the 2016 MacBook Pro as well. But now, this same keyboard has migrated down market to the MacBook Air, and it's just such a pleasure to type on. The keys are spaced a little further apart. If you were frustrated by the previous MacBook Air keyboard, then this one is going to make you really happy. It truly is a night and day experience when comparing the two. I tried to, to type on my 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2019 and compared it to this and it was just no contest. I would take this keyboard 10 out of 10 times. 
One of the really cool features of the 2020 MacBook Air is that Apple doubled the entry level storage. So no longer does it start with just 128 gigabytes of flash storage. No, they actually dropped the price on the base model from 1099 to 999 and then doubled the storage from 128 to 256. I've always felt like 128 gigabytes of storage was way too little, even for the most basic users, but having 256 gigabytes of storage is actually quite nice. So with my previous MacBook Airs, I always got used to carrying around this guy right here. This is a SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. Great little portable drive. But now Apple has doubled the max amount of storage you can configure on your MacBook Air. So it used to be just one terabyte. Now you can configure up to two terabytes, which is quite a lot of storage. Even if you're editing high quality video with two terabytes, you could probably manage to do so without toting around a portable SSD. For the first time since the MacBook Air got its retina display, you can now select between multiple CPU configurations. Previously, you only had one choice. Now you have three choices. A 1.1 gigahertz dual core, a 1.1 gigahertz quad core i5, and a 1.2 gigahertz quad core i7. These are all 10th generation Intel processors. They all support hyper threading but the entry level CPU is just a dual core processor, whereas the mid tier and the highest end CPU configs are quad core processors. So of course I have the dual core, you can see the single core score is actually decent, 987, but the multi-core, wow. That's gonna hurt when you're editing video or trying to edit video in Final Cut Pro 10 or doing anything else that takes advantage of multi-core. With that being said, single core is actually pretty decent. Games are gonna play fairly well for the most part. Although for more intense games, you may have some struggles with that integrated Intel Iris Plus GPU. But the great thing about having Thunderbolt 3 built in is that you can always connect an external GPU if you need the extra graphics power. But I was actually pretty surprised at how well this thing performed gaming wise. Most of the Apple Arcade games I played, played pretty decently, frame rates weren't horrible. If you're just a casual gamer, you want to play games occasionally on your MacBook Air, this is going to be perfectly fine as long as you set your expectations accordingly. With all that being said, you do get better single core performance when compared to the 2019 MacBook Pro entry level model, so there's that. But to be honest, I probably wouldn't even recommend trying to edit video on the entry level MacBook Air, it's probably just going to frustrate you. One of the cool things about the Intel Iris Plus GPU is that it does support the Pro Display XDR at full resolution, which is pretty impressive given the fact that even a machine like the iMac Pro doesn't support full resolution connectivity to the Apple Pro Display XDR. Now, with that said, temper your expectations. You try to play games. If it's any game not called Solitaire, you're probably going to run into some heavy frame rate issues when running at full resolution on that Pro Display XDR. Now, when just doing regular stuff like browsing the web, here I have two Safari windows side by side, able to scroll through pretty well. I will say that some of the issues have to do with lack of RAM. That 8 gigabytes entry level RAM configuration just isn't enough. If you can't afford it, by all means, please upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes. It's going to make a world of difference. It's going to make using the MacBook Air a much better experience. Now that being said, Apple is using faster, more power friendly memory in the MacBook Air 2020 edition. They're using 3733 megahertz low power DDR4X memory. So not only is the memory faster than the previous edition MacBook Air, and when you consider that memory can have a huge effect on battery life of a laptop, it makes sense that Apple will look for every advantage it can when it comes to memory and using the most power friendly memory that they can. And even with that, this MacBook Air actually gets one hour less battery life than its predecessor. This one's rated at 11 hours of wireless web browsing while the previous model was at 12 hours. Believe it or not, all Apple devices, with the exception of the regular iMac and the 10.2 inch iPad now feature Bluetooth 5.0. Yes, with the 2020 upgrade to the MacBook Air, Apple's cheapest laptop now gets Bluetooth 5.0 support. Now this is kind of an unheralded bullet point on a list of tech specs, but Bluetooth 5.0 uses less power, has larger message capacity, features faster data transmission capability, 
and it increases range. The 2020 MacBook Air adds support for wide stereo sound and Dolby Atmos playback for supported content. And in addition to the wider stereo soundstage, the 3 mic array now includes directional beamforming, which was first featured on the 16-inch MacBook Pro for improved microphone performance. Now obviously, physics and all that, the speakers aren't going to blow you away, the bass isn't going to knock your socks off, but I actually was pretty impressed with the sound quality of the MacBook Air considering how small the speakers are, especially when playing games. I was kind of surprised to find that the sound effects and the soundtrack of the games I played were quite engrossing coming from those small little speakers on each side of the MacBook Air's new and improved keyboard. So the MacBook Air 2020 entry level edition with the dual core CPU. No, this is not the machine you want to purchase if you plan on editing video editing raw photos, things like that. But if you're just doing basic stuff, you're writing, you're browsing the web, and if push comes to shove, yes, you can edit videos technically on this machine, but I definitely don't recommend it. If you wanna do that, get at least the quad core model with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're gonna be a lot more happier that way, just trust me on that one. Now, if you are just that quote unquote basic user, you actually may wanna consider an iPad now that there's built in mouse and keyboard support. But for those of you who absolutely know that you want a Mac and not an iPad, as long as you have the proper expectations, the 2020 MacBook Air and all of its various flavors could be a great machine for you. 